and I'm missing you terribly. I cannot believe this has happened to us, but we're going to finish the school year the best way that we can. And so um, this video here today is going to walk you through one of my very favorite poems called O oh Captain, My Captain by Walt Whitman. And if everything works the way that it's supposed to, you should see me in the corner and then you should see the PowerPoint that I would be using in my classroom on the screen. So that's pretty cool, right? Okay, so the poem is called Oh Captain, My Captain, and it's by Walt Whitman. Here's some background information for you. Walt Whitman lived in Washington, D.C. during the Civil War. He worked as a government clerk and a war correspondent. He also served as a volunteer nurse, caring for the thousands of wounded soldiers who filled the nearby military hospitals. The Saturday before Lincoln's second inauguration, that's when a president is sworn into office, Whitman attended a reception at the White House. On Inauguration Day, March 4th, 1865, Whitman twice saw Lincoln pass by in his carriage. He commented that the president looked very much worn and tired. The lines, indeed, of vast responsibilities, intricate questions, and demands of life and death cut deeper than ever upon his dark brown face. Yet all the goodness, tenderness, shrewd, and canny shrewdness underneath the furrows. The president was assassinated just a month later on April 14, 1865. The country had just concluded a terrible civil war. The difficult job of healing had just begun. So obviously this poem is going to be about President Lincoln. Um, remember that Lincoln was president during the Civil War, and that's the war when the northern states or the Union fought the southern states or the Confederacy the North, which was led by President Lincoln, prevailed and slavery was abolished in our nation. So that's just a little context of what was going on in the world when this poem was written. There's going to be three vocabulary words that I want you to know in the poem. One of them is rack, and that's going to be a violent storm. One of them is exulting, which just means rejoicing. And then the victor is going to be the winner. So an elegy is a poem of a mourning. Most elegies are about someone who has died. Some elegies mourn a way of life that is gone forever. O Captain, My Captain mourns the tragic death of President Abraham Lincoln. This elegy uses an extended metaphor. That means a metaphor is stated and the comparison is extended as far as the poet can take it. And in this case, that's the entire poem. So as we read it, you're deciding who is the captain. That's not a trick question. And what does the ship represent? Here we go. I'm going to move my little bubble over. Oh, captain, my captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near, the bells I hear, the people all exulting. While follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. But oh, heart, 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 oh, the bleeding drops of red, where on the deck my captain lies, fallen cold and dead. O oh, captain, my captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up, for you the flag is flung, for you the bugle trills. For you bouquets and ribboned wreaths, for you the shores are crowding. For you they call the swaying mass, their eager faces turning. Here, captain, dear father, this arm beneath your head. It is some dream that on the deck you've fallen cold and dead. My captain does not answer. His lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm. He has no pulse, nor will. The ship is anchored safe and sound, its voyage closed and done. From fearful trip, the victor ship comes in with object won. Exult, O shores, and ring, O bells. But I, with mournful tread, walk the deck my captain lies, fallen, cold, and dead. So in the first stanza here, there's a few things that I want you to look at. Um, obviously, we I told you that a rack is a violent storm. So the ship has come through a rack. The ship has come through a storm. The people on the shores waiting for the ship are all exulting and rejoicing. They're super happy that the boat has made it through the storm and returned home safely. When it says heart, 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 that's an example of repetition. And the bleeding drops of red, that's like my favorite line in this whole poem. It's imagery. You can see it. You can see the color. You can see the bleeding. Um, and then you have this captain that has fallen cold and dead. 
I think the irony of this poem here is that the ship has come through this horrible storm. It's made it home safe and sound, but the one person that led the ship through the storm does not get to celebrate with all the people waiting on the boat because he's died on the deck of the, of the boat. So remember, we're trying to decide who's the captain and what does this ship represent? In the second stanza, there's a few things I want you to look at. It starts the same way, oh, captain, my captain. So again, we're going to call that repetition. When it says the flag is flung, that's going to be alliteration. And the bugle or the trumpet trilling is an onomatopoeia. It also mentions that the captain is like a father. So that's comparing the captain to a father without using like or as. So can you guys remind me what that would be? And this stanza ends the exact same way with fallen, cold, and dead. And we call that a refrain. Last stanza. Uh, the author calls the captain a father again when it says, my father does not feel my arm. Safe and sound is alliteration. Victor was another vocabulary word. That means winner. So the ship is winning and the ship has come into shore. Chuck is under my bed. That's Spencer. Hi, Spencer. Making a video here, Spence. And then you can see that the uh, ring of the bells is another onomatopoeia. And there's a refrain again, fallen.